The top five mistakes to avoid while training back. The first mistake on our list is gonna be not enough variety. The back is made up of many amazing components. You've got your traps, your lats, your rhomboids, your rectus spinae, the list goes on. Think of them as a little group of badasses. You may not be able to see them, but they're right back there, ready, willing, and hungry for more. For instance, for your upper back, you can do exercises such as face pulls and high rows. For your lower back, back extensions. For your lats, you can do single arm rows or pull-ups. This is especially good if you want to focus on any weak points because if you're trying to focus on weak points but you're not focusing on the area you need to be, well, you're not going to grow and get better. So remember that when hitting back, there's many different exercises you can do to key in on certain portions of the back itself. Extra credit for those of you who counted how many times I said back in this sequence. Mistake number two on our list is going to be not using scapular movement. Yes, I realize at this point I've used terms such as erector spinae, rhomboids, and now scapular. You're probably thinking, is this guy talking about the back or the new Ridley Scott sci-fi movie? But bear with me, because this one is really important. Don't be an arm puller. That's when you'll be working back and all you're doing is you're using your arms to perform most of the exercises. For instance, when performing rows, you want to retract your scapular back and then get the full benefit of the exercise, really utilizing that back. Or when you're performing pull-ups, you want to press scapular down during the duration of the exercise. To get used to this, go ahead and try it with no weight. Just get used to retracting and depressing. It's gonna help you out a lot in the long run and you're gonna feel it right away. When a lot of times people do something as lat pull downs, if they're just using their arms, they're just gonna be like, well, I didn't feel it in the back. Well, that's because you're not utilizing your scapula to the fullest. So get out there and retract and depress that scapula. I believe in you. Mistake number three on our list is gonna be forgetting to stretch and mobilize. Working out those muscles makes them tight, it makes them sore, and it could be prone to injury if you don't properly warm up and stretch afterwards. It's amazing just how many back muscles connect in and around the shoulder girdle, and seeing as the shoulder is the most mobile joint in the body, you really want to make sure all these muscles are lubed up and good to go before hitting that intense workout. What we recommend doing is doing some mobility, a little bit of warm up for 10 to 15 minutes beforehand. You can either, hey, just jump on the treadmill for 10 minutes if you'd like, or you can do some great mobility exercises, which we recommend. And then after your workout, just do a little bit of stretching for 10 to 15 minutes. Believe me, your body's gonna thank you for it, and it's gonna lead to less injuries and a much more fulfilling life as a buff dude or girl. Mistake number four on the list is gonna be lifting too heavy. And this really ties in with the prior two mistakes. That's gonna be not being an arm puller and also being preventative in order to avoid injury. Is hitting a new personal record or one rep max fun? Yes, absolutely. But remember what you're working up towards. Don't just try to go in the gym every single time and just max out, you know, stick the pin in the bottom of the stack and try to hit those pull downs as hard as you can right away. Because not only are you gonna be arm pulling, you may injure yourself, but also that form of yours, it looks like horse shit. The final mistake on the list is gonna be using straps and belts all the time. These are excellent tools in the gym to aid and assist, but they should only be used when you really need to supplement your exercise. For instance, with straps, do you see guys using it on deadlifts? Are they great? Yeah, they are. But they're also there for certain reasons, such as when you're trying to hit a new PR, you're really using those straps because your smaller muscle groups, let's say your forearms, your grip, they can't handle the load you're placing it under, and you're really trying to utilize the back to the best of your abilities. So when you're using smaller amounts of weight, refrain from the straps and the belt because you want to utilize those smaller muscles. You want to work your forearms. You want to get that better grip. If you're always using these tools, you're never gonna build those smaller groups as well, which is a question we get a lot of the times. Maybe the grip is weak, things of that nature. So use them, but use them sparingly. Don't walk into the gym looking like Robo Dude. All right, dudes and girls, there we go. That wraps up the five common mistakes to avoid when training back. 
As I said in the beginning, don't just think of the back as one single collective piece. You've got your trapezius, your graboids, your rector spinae, your xenomorph, your lats. All right, I may have been bullshitting on a few of those, but I'm trying to keep you on your toes. So let me know which ones of those are real, which ones are fake, and where I got the fake names from. Little buff dudes, pop quiz. Until next time, you know what to do. Suggest more in the mistake series, and hey, stay buff.